Hi, I'm Mr. Slunky Picks, and welcome to another adventure. Today we're going to be outfitting our Chevy Shorty family van with its cabinetry and furniture. Although it's a Shorty, we are putting a queen size bed in the back here, so that won't leave us with too much extra space. But we do want cabinets, so we do have a refrigerator here. We're going to be putting a cabinet above it, and we've already started the one next to it. Out back here, we have this small compartment that can store three liters of engine fluids. We have two vintage Halliburton suitcases, which will fit perfectly underneath this seat base. We're also thinking of putting an electrical socket on this side in the space we have. We have everything planned and measured out, and now it's time to cut our wood. Well, here it is after the first evening of work. We've got the main pieces for the bench cut out. We've got the uh, cabinet that goes around the refrigerator uh, all made. And we've kind of got things figured out. So the reason this area sticks out by about four inches is because there's going to be an armrest that'll be going here for this side of the bench. It's going to come around the back uh, in the step well since it extends into the door area since that's the only way that you can fit a queen size into a shorty. We had to trim the side of the fridge cabinet in order to be able to open the door. However, you will not be able to see that because there will be a wall on this cabinet here. And we've sort of figured out how we're going to fasten the wood to the subfloor. So we're working on the rear seat riser. This has been a very tricky piece, <laughs> trying to uh, get it to fit properly. And we don't want it any higher than the wheel well here. So on both sides, it's fitting well. It's almost there. I'm going to have to 45 the uh, wood under the uh, wheel well here on the underside of the wood. With the router, we had to make notches here to fit the wood. It's been a lot of work. It's almost there. And then we can trim this rear area once we uh, know exactly where everything's going to line up. <laughs> this rear piece here took four hours to make and fit in place. And it's not even screwed down yet. It was a huge amount of work, though being that it was 45 degree angles on there, uh, routed around the backside, leave room to be able to unbolt the tail lights, and need be in the future, and fit properly. A lot of work, but it's coming along. So, some of this stuff we have to adjust as we go, unfortunately. We thought that we were going to have room for large amplifiers underneath the seat and still be able to fit the Halliburton luggage in there. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. As well, we wanted to have a big subwoofer under the seat right here. We wanted to run this Hertz Milli, a 10-inch subwoofer, and unfortunately, it's going to need too much airspace to be able to fit there. My dad really wanted to use this Macintosh uh, MC431 uh, amplifier in the system. Unfortunately, it was just too big. Tried in all kinds of different areas to put this Soundstream tarantula in. We actually had two of them. 
don't mind my dad's uh, way of measuring amplifiers with beer cans. It's not mine. I'm too young to be drinking beer. But, uh, unfortunately, none of this stuff is going to work. So we're going to have to find a smaller subwoofer, or a subwoofer that takes smaller airspace, and we need a smaller amplifier, or amplifiers. This sub box is turning into <laughs> quite a bit of work. We ended up buying a JL Audio CP108LG-W3V3 uh, sub box. And it's going to fit. It's ported. So we'll port it through the wall that has the armrest right here. Um, but we've got to have room for the wires to go through and around. That's why these little notches are here. We gotta put a notch in that one still. And you're gonna be able to pick it up and take it out when you want to. And we'll be able to have a storage behind there. And then obviously a toolbox behind there. This is a lot of work. It's been a lot of work getting this armrest piece to where it is right now. We have uh, everything laid out. We had to anticipate what we are going to do and what we are doing at the moment. We have this subwoofer here in its own little compartment that it fits snugly in. We also have this compartment behind it for storage. And we have holes drilled out in most of the pieces to fit the wires through. We've also cut and reinforced this piece here and made this middle section removable so that we can service any wires that we'll put behind it. There's a lot of pieces required to put this armrest section together. This front piece here still needs a hole cut out right here and down here. This one for the outlet that we're going to put in and one down here for the port. On the back side here, we have a little ledge that is able to support the subwoofer. And then we have the little notch right here, which is able to allow the wires to go past and to the back. On the next piece, we have a little hole right here that is going to be for the wires for the outlet to come past and into the gap. We've got the same notch here for the subwoofer wires to go past again. We've also got a little notch right here that is for airflow underneath the sub because this is a down firing sub. The reason nothing has been screwed together is because we still need to waterproof it. Now, our solution is to use the same rubber based paint that we used on the sub floor. Then we can screw it all together tomorrow. We've got the armrest glued and screwed, and as you can see, it's extra reinforced. We've also got the area for the sub box all installed. As you can see, it fits easy and then it's secure. Our next area of focus is the trunk. Down here, we're gonna be making a hidden amp rack. As you may have remembered from before, the amplifiers that we did want to use just simply were too big. So we went and picked up this Rockford amplifier, which fits perfectly. We're going to make a beauty panel that goes from one wheel well to the other so that we can cover it and make it look better. We're also going to be squaring off the wheel wells and adding a couple lights, one on each side. The other side we're also going to extend a little further to add an electrical socket. And over here, we're going to be adding a little shelf to cover our oil container. Then we can utilize the space above it. Quick update on the trunk over here. We've squared off the wheel wells, and on this side we've cut out the hole for the electrical box. As you can see on both sides, we've cut out the wheel well. That's because we need the room for the luggage. Many years ago, we purchased this 
vintage Halliburton luggage set. And we've been saving it for the right project. These are too old to go onto an airplane for a trip, but in the back of the van here, they'll be perfect. As you can see, there's definitely enough room to have the amplifier in the back there. We're thinking about putting a fire extinguisher in the corner over here. And on the other side, we're also going to be building that shelf that we mentioned to go above the oil containers. And we're thinking that we may put the jack there. The right rear storage compartment is now all framed out. We have this removable shelf that we mentioned earlier. This provides access to the oil jug compartment while still providing storage up above. Now you always want these things to be serviceable. So we've built a removable wall here. This allows access to any wires that go back here or back here. The shelf is placed on three layers of three quarter inch MDF. This allows the oil jugs to still come out smoothly even after the seat base is placed here. The trunk area has been glued, screwed, and painted. We're leaving these removable pieces out because we're going to be putting the seat base on soon and we're gonna be needing to do some seat belt bracketry which uh, will go here and on the other side there as well. Now, we need these out to do that, and who knows, we might even need to notch them out to allow for a little bit more clearance. But right now, what we're gonna be doing is doing this beauty panel. As you can see, we are going to be cutting out three holes, and then we're gonna be putting some wire mesh on top, and then on this side, we'll put some speaker grill cloth, and that should allow the amplifier to breathe while still providing a little bit more reinforcement. We have this removable back plate here, which is going to have the amplifier mounted to it. We have it removable so that we can remove all the uh, audio equipment, just in case we ever need to replace anything for some reason. for the rear heater is framed out now. There's the brace on the side of the fridge and on either side of this divider wall for the, um, the lids that will be covering the storage and heater. Now, we're basically ready to start doing the angle iron for the uh, seat belts. Now, we're ready to uh, start working on the reinforcement for the seat belt mounts. This one shouldn't be too hard. It's just going to be a straight bar going from the armrest area all the way to the tail light area here. And then there will be another piece going across here. That shouldn't be too hard. But this one here is going to be a little tricky. It's going to be easy up until the filler neck and we're gonna have to cut it and then contour it uh, all the way around there and then continue it on to the back one. So we've got two inch by two inch angle iron. It's quarter inch thick. It should be plenty enough for our seat belt brackets. So here's a little update on the seat belt reinforcements. Um, <laughs> we've got the uh, pieces cut, almost ready to be welding, and it's going to be uh, getting small angle iron brackets that'll be welded to the body structure, as well as uh, dual reinforcements on each wheel well to hold everything in place in the event of a uh, collision. 
We've got holes drilled for the seat belts already. And on here we've got holes drilled for uh, carriage bolts to come through that will hold the plywood underneath it to the uh, <laughs> to the seat belt mount. My dad had to uh, weld uh, a little notch into here so that it would clear the filler neck. I've done some welding, but uh, when it comes to safety, my dad does that kind of stuff. These are the seat belts that we're going to be using. They're the royal blue uh, seat belts from Retro Belt, and it's the aircraft style ones. And we've got five of them, three across the back and one on each side. We've got the seat belt bars bolted in in the wheel wells. Uh, it's supported underneath with braces similar to this. Of course, since we were welding here with all the wood around, we had the fire extinguisher handy. So it's bolted in on the wheel wells, welded in the corners, and reinforced in the uh, back here. Now, we've got some carriage bolts bolting the uh, rear seat bays to the angle iron, but as well, we have this thin three quarter inch plywood with the carriage bolts coming through that can uh, fasten the seat back partially to it. We've got the first cut of the backrest made. We've got cutouts so that we can access the uh, rear door check straps as well as cutouts to be able to access the seat belt bolts if need be. Now, this is going to get covered with a quarter inch beauty panel and then get upholstered after, so you won't see the cutouts. Uh, we've got a piece of scrap quarter inch here, so you can see how it's uh, going to rest on the angle iron without sticking out so that when it's upholstered it'll look 100% finished. As we've said before, everything needs to be 100% serviceable. So we're going to uh, make the panels that go in front of this, they'll uh, unscrew and reveal this opening right here to access the taillight hardware as well as on the other side. And then you can see this little trough or gap that's three quarters of an inch wide in between the angle iron and the vertical piece of plywood. Well, that's for wires to uh, run through for the electrical outlets as well as the amplifier. So we're going to make the next two front pieces and check back with you then. Okay, <laughs> here's a little update on this. Uh, what we've done is we've made kind of a shelf inside of here so that the wiring can run inside of this uh, tunnel. The reason for that is because we started thinking that maybe if the wires are resting on the carriage bolts uh, for a period of time, they might start wearing through the wire. So this will be a little bit safer, which meant that we had to uh, enlarge this opening. Still won't be a problem because it's gonna have that beauty panel over top of it. Let's take a look what it looks like from the inside. All right, it's just about ready back here to get uh, screwed together. You can see the uh, three quarter inch MDF just above the angle iron. That is the bottom of that tunnel on the back side. And then everything has the angle of the backrest on it. Now we still have to cut out the two taillight opening pieces uh, on both sides. And we wanna have access, so we'll make them screwable. So we'll do that, and then we'll glue it all together, screw it all together, and we'll check back with you then. We're about to glue and screw this backrest together, but I wanted to show you how this wiring tunnel runs. Let's go on the inside for a better view. This is the piece we're about to glue and screw to the back piece. 
We've notched out the three quarter inch MDF to make this wiring tunnel. And we have two zero gauge wires coming through for the amplifier. And we're also gonna have one more wire coming through that will have house power coming from the inverter. We have these small removable sections on both sides that we're going to screw onto the back here. And then we can unscrew them and have full access to the tail lights. All right, the uh, opening bench covers have been made for both sides. We're going to be using these piano hinges here to be able to uh, open them. We're not sure on what kind of handle we're going to put on yet. It might just be a finger hole. And then, well, I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. Well, we've been able to start painting it now. So, the cutting has been done, <laughs> and now it's time to do some rolling. It's looking pretty good. Alright, this gives a good idea of what each compartment is for prior to us assembling it. You can see how there is a uh, ventilation area for the rear heater, as well as air gaps for the fridge behind here, and beneath the uh, in the battery compartment lots of room for any wiring to go through and uh, here's the rear heater area easy access for taillight servicing there's the uh, door latch and the other taillight subwoofer area let's put this thing together all right here it is with the compartment lids back in place and the tail light panels placed in. We're not screwing them in because we're going to have to take them out to uh, the tail lights out to do some servicing right away. But let's get some cushions in. I'm going to show you how these compartments are going to work when we're camping. This one here is designed to store the pole that will go for the table. It was designed for the pole, but it will also be holding the blanket that will go on the bed. The one over here is designed to store our vintage snap-on toolkit, just in case we need to do any roadside repairs. It also stores the sub box as I've showed before if you're enjoying this video so far leave a like comment and subscribe but let's check this out here's the trunk so far in the future, we'll be building a beauty panel that'll go here, but it'll still have the hole right here that we can reach to get the uh, rear handle from. But it'll cover up these holes so that we can upholster straight across. The luggage is fitting here perfectly. Now, we have a jack here that uh, fits right above this shelf. We don't know if it'll be this exact jack that we use, but it'll be one very similar to it. It still uh, fits above this shelf, and we can remove it to access our oil. My dad and I have spent a lot of time planning and designing this, so it's nice to see it starting to come to shape. There will be a further video on a special project that we're going to do in front of the refrigerator above the battery box. And we'll also keep you up to date on the electrical and extra cabinetry that we'll be doing. But I hope you like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.